Hello everyone, this is Aisha Clark, the winner of Dr. Yui's um, free giveaway, uh, free surgery giveaway. Um, and I'm just, you know, doing this video to tell my journey from start to now. Um, so I was scrolling on Instagram um, in November and I seen, uh, I was following their recovery house, Dr. Lee's recovery house, um, Luxury Road. Um, and they posted a giveaway. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, I should enter. So when I seen the post, it was like a day before it closed. Like it was like the last day or whatever to enter. So I did a video um of uh, i did it so the contest was you had to submit a video and follow dr yili and follow the recovery house i was already following both so all i had to do was um do send the video and tag um yeah send them the video i was already following both um dr yili and recovery house so i did and then uh later on that month, I think a week or so, a week or so, I can't remember, they announced the winner um, on live and I wasn't on the live because I didn't know. Actually, the day that they said they were gonna announce the winner, I was busy and I forgot to tune in, but I don't think they actually announced the winner that day. They announced the winner like, I think two days after that or something, but I still end up missing it. So, um, I went on the recovery house and I was looking. I'm like, who won? Because I didn't see no video. And then the next day they posted the video and she said my name. I screamed. I was so happy because, you know. But finally, we are going to complete this giveaway. I've been so, so, so eager to know who the winner is. I loved all the videos that you guys sent to us. They were beautiful. They were very... Um, hard spoken they were like amazing and i wish everybody could win but we're going to pick just one good luck for everyone i'm ready to pull out this name and see who's going to be a yui doll for next year i'm so nervous <laughs> okay okay let's pick this person let's see quien se va a operar con la doctora Yili. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's a USA number. So it's somebody from the USA. It's numero de Estados Unidos. Y la ganadora es. The winner is. <laughs> oh my gosh! Asia Polk. Asia or Asia. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I'm okay. Okay. What? Can you see it? It's Asia or Asia Park. Okay, let me just hide her information. I have her phone number and her email here, and I'm going to be contacting her to let her know that she's going to get a free surgery with Dr. Yuri de los Santos next year. Like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Um, I'm going to pull out your video again, the one that you sent to us, so everybody can see that you won this giveaway with Dr. Yuri de los Santos. Oh my God, Asia, congratulations. Congratulations, thank you for everybody, um, everybody who participated. It was a great time with you guys and we hope to repeat this um, sometime soon. Okay, so I don't know if she's here on this live. It would be amazing if she was, but Asia, Oh my God, you went up for surgery? Oh my God, I cannot wait to see you. Um, thank you for everybody um, for sharing this moment with me. And thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a great time. And you have a nice one, have a great night. God bless you, happy holidays. So I went through a long weight loss journey. Um, I had gastric bypass two years ago. On uh, November 30th, 2018, I had gastric bypass. I was 240 pounds 
um, due to having my children, I never got to got a chance to. It was a struggle losing weight. I would lose weight and gain it, and lose weight and gain it. Yeah. So because I did gastric bypass, um, I had all this extra skin. So plastic surgery is the only thing that I can get rid of the hanging, saggy skin from uh, gastric bypass. So entering the contest, the the free giveaway. And actually winning the free giveaway, I was so happy because I was dealing with a lot of body image. Because I uh, lost all that weight in my eyes, I was still big because of my extra skin. And um, so um, the winning the giveaway meant a lot to me. I was so ecstatic. I was so happy. Um, and so... Um, I submitted all my labs. I had to get pre-approved before I actually made uh, a date to go in for surgery. So I sent in all my labs and uh, did EKG and did everything, all the tests I needed to, to do to get pre-approved to go. So I got pre-approved to go and I set my surgery date till February 4th. So um, February 4th came, I was so happy. I was ecstatic. Um, Yili and her team was happy. They were like so excited for me to, to come and uh, get my surgery. So I went February 4th to Dominican Republic by myself. I went when I got there. I wasn't scared or anything going to DR because my parents are Jamaican. So, you know, I've been to Jamaica by myself numerous times. So going to DR was was when I got to the recovery house, I went ahead and um, put on my um, the the things to circulate my blood and my calves, um, and then I recorded the video with the supplies because I wanted to help everybody else that's preparing to have surgery on the supplies. Um, yeah, I overdid it with the supplies. Like my draw, you do get a draw and you get a closet. My draw was packed. <laughs> was packed with supplies I had like everything but the next morning we went to do labs it was only me and my roommate there the next morning we got up like 5 30 we left for labs about six we got in it was no way it was like in and out we got in we did our chest x-ray um our blood work and then we went uh we went to fill out the paperwork. Um, we went to fill out the paperwork. So I got there February 1st. The labs was February 2nd. We filled out the paperwork. They have you sign a, confiden a confidentiality paper saying that you cannot discuss um, your journey without Yili's permission, which I don't care about. I'm going to share what I went through. I don't care what I signed. They could rip that up, tear that up, sue me if they want. You know, the whole thing about this is to let other people know, um, you know, the risk and know what you went through is important. It's imperative. You know, it's information because I might could save somebody's life, you know, so I'm going to share my journey. So now I'm here sharing from the beginning to now, up to now, how everything's been. So we have to sign that paperwork. Um, it's a lot of papers too. Like basically you signing your life away, you're signing your life away saying if anything happens to you, you know, is a risk. This surgery is a risk. So we did that. Um, and then I didn't have to pay. I didn't pay my fee that day. So I did have fees to pay for surgery, like for the tests, all the tests and stuff. Um, and the first garment and compression socks. I brought my own compression socks, but I still just got theirs. Um, Cause you can never have too much compression socks. So, and stuff like that. So I still have to pay fees. Um, so yeah, so after that, after we did that, we were out of there like an hour and 15 minutes, we we're done. So we went back to the, um, we went back to the recovery house. That day I got my, um, I went to, wait, did I go to the pharmacy that day? I can't remember, but I know we went to the grocery store that day. We walked to the grocery store 
and we walked out to the reef to you know look at the water and the scenery and stuff. It's so beautiful. Dominican Republic. It's like we on a freaking cliff. And they, they were nice at the recovery house. They gave us breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They made sure you ate. Um, their food was okay. I liked their food. A lot of people did not, but I liked their food. Um, I'm not really picky with food, so I liked their food. Some people, they didn't like the food, but the house was full of girls. I thought, okay, it's COVID. It's not going to be that much people in February. When we got there, the house was full of girls that already had their surgery, though. So, um, so we were just talking with them and stuff like that. Um, so the next day came, which was Wednesday. Um, Wednesday was like a free day. I went to get my, it was like, a, you know, the last day of being like mobile and stuff. So I went to, someone told me about the meds. So at the pharmacy in DR, you do not need prescription. You can go to the pharmacy with your list and get the medications. The only thing is the pharmacy, they don't speak English. So you have to go with someone that speak bilingual so that you can get the correct dosage of the meds you need. But once you have your medication list, you can go to any pharmacy in DR and they'll fill the list, um, the list. So you just have to make sure you go before surgery because you know, you can't go, after surgery you're gonna be in too much pain to try to get medication so if you're gonna get your medication on your own make sure you bring the list to the pharmacy ahead of time um so i got everything on my list so we walked to the pharmacy and walked back it wasn't far um the pharmacy wasn't far it was just like a 15 minute walk it wasn't far at all so i got all my medication i paid for my medication i paid about 145 145 for everything um and then what else we did i just prepared like i packed my um i packed my hospital bag i made sure i had this this is very important you know very important so i had this and i had my blanket where's my blanket it's down there i had my plush blanket you're going to be cold after surgery so you you know you need this and the plush blanket that like I was like so comfortable with both um, of those and I just packed my bag I packed you know everything I needed my uh, thing for my legs for the blood circulation I packed my uh, blood pressure cuff just in case my temperature just in case um, for extra I did have my own overnight nurse so my own my private overnight nurse had all 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 the stuff as well. She had her own um blood pressure cuff and temperature stuff and and stuff like that. Um because I'm a person I like to check every hour here in the states when you do any procedure they check your vitals every hour. So uh So um so yes, yeah, so I prepared everything for surgery down the morning of surgery. Um yeah, we left 6 a.m. We got there. It was just me and her that day having surgery. There was no other girls there, just me and her. Me and my roommate um, had surgery that day. And um, I paid my fee that I needed to pay, which was $1,225. That was my fee that I had to pay. I think I was like $400 short, and then I... Um, I paid the rest with my card on another day. But yeah, I paid the fees that I had to pay. It was a giveaway, so the surgery was initially free, but it is fees that you have to pay that is not covered. Um, 
and the day before when we did labs i see i did the chest extra the um the chest ultrasound and the legs ultrasound and all the extra tests that was required i would give them props they do a good job with um with the labs and and making sure that your body is ready for surgery and you're in good health they do a really good job in making sure that you're in good health before making sure you're in good health before surgery so on surgery day um i did emissions and then they had to do um they had to put my iv it took them five tries before they got the iv in i still got the marks on my hands i still got marks on my hands from it was only one mark, this one right here, of the IV. Um, and the guy, like, after he took off his gloves, he even put back on gloves, and I'm looking at him like, um, I know this is a third world country, but you gotta put on gloves. But either way, um, they did my IV, they prepped me for surgery, and then, um, they took me up to the surgery floor and me and my roommate, we actually was next to each other. So we were talking, talking, and um, we were talking and then, and then next thing you know, the lady just walked over and put something in, in my IV and I was gone. Um, I didn't wake up until they were rolling me into my room. They were rolling me into, the, into my um, hospital room and when they rolled me in there, my overnight nurse were there. was there. She was there with all my stuff. Um, she was so nice. She helped me so much. I, I, I'm so thankful and grateful for hiring her, the over, my private overnight nurse. Her and her team is amazing. Um, she's from the Bronx as well. Uh, <laughs> She's so hilarious to me. She keep it like 1,000. She keeps it, she's so real, like she keeps it 100. Uh, so yeah, so she helped me um, get into my Faha. That's when I first almost passed out was getting into my Faha. I felt really dizzy and she poured water on me. She poured cold water on me. So when I stood up, I told her I was feeling dizzy and then she poured water on me and then I kind of like woke up and then she put my faha on. And then um, we noticed that the drain was the, the drain that they, cause they put a drain in you to drain out the fluids it was like dark red so blood was coming like back out and the whole night um so the next morning um dr yeely assistance came to check up on me she did a video of me in the hospital um i was feeling fine um, I was not nause nauseated or anything. I was good. The only thing is I couldn't stand up. I couldn't stand up. That was the only thing. So I couldn't, when I stand up, I feel dizzy. But other than that, my vitals were good. So, um, Dr. Yuli, she came to see me and... And, but before she came to see me, other people came to see me. And I was like, what's going on? Why everybody keep coming in my room? Then Dr. Yuli came to see me. And then uh, a hematologist came to see me. And they, they was checking my blood too. I guess they checked my blood a couple times, like the night before they checked my blood. Because they gave me... Sorry, I meant iron transfusion. They gave me iron transfusion. transfusion. Cause my iron dropped, my iron was low, 
drops had and iron seven. transfusion. So had iron transfusion. I think the night, yeah, the night of my surgery, then it, and then the next day, I had iron infusion, and then everybody transfusion. kept coming to my room, checking up on me, and I'm like, I feel fine. And they, you know, feel my, listen to me, take my temperature, do my vitals. Um, my overnight nurse did all my vitals throughout the whole night, every hour. She did my vitals. I even still have the paper with all the time she did my vitals. I still have it. She wrote it on a piece of paper. And I have the paper till now. Um, but, yeah, it was kind of weird because everybody kept coming in the room, like, checking on me. And I'm like, is something wrong in my mind? I'm like, is something wrong? So, Yili called. Yili called and she said that... Um, uh looks like what well, she said something is going on and we have to open you back up to see what's going on yeah that's what she said something is going on uh and we have to open you up to see what's going on so i don't i can't remember if that's her exact words but it's something like that i don't think she said internal bleeding i i doubt she said internal bleeding but she said that they're gonna open me back up to find out what's going on. She was, when she came to see me, she was very caring. Um, she was concerned um, and stuff. And her assistants came multiple times to check up on me. Everybody was like just concerned, but I was feeling fine. I was feeling okay. Like it's just that I couldn't stand up every time I stand up. Like, I feel I'm like passing out every time I stand up. Um, so the next day later on that night, so it was 24 hours after my surgery before they uh, brought me back upstairs. Uh, so they brought me upstairs back to the emergency room. I mean, I didn't need the emergency room. They brought me upstairs back to the surgical room. So I got to see the surgical room. <laughs> When I seen the surgical room, I'm like, this is the operating room. I was looking like, I was looking like, where's the machines? Like, cause where's the lights? I'm used to seeing, you know, I'm a still processing tech here in the States. So I work um, in the operating room with the operating room. So I'm used to seeing operating rooms with a lot of machines and bright lights and stuff. Theirs was just like a room it wasn't even that big and it had metal tables and I seen the um the green towels the blue towels blue or green towels I can't remember I think it's blue blue towels and I'm like this is the operating room by the time they transferred me onto the table I was gone so but I was shocked that I thought that it would, the operating room would look like an operating room. I didn't see no monitors. I'm like, so how do they check to see if your heart rate dropping or whatever? But they put me back on the table. I was out. I don't know what they put in my IV, but she said they were going to put me on the local anesthetic. And when she said that, by the time they transferred me and she said that, I was gone. Then I woke back up. When I woke back up, um, I think I was in my room. I was in, they brought me back to my room. By the time I woke back up, I was in the room. And then, um, like two hours, they, oh, when they had brought me to the operating room, I was on my third back blood. So by the time I, they finished and they brought me back to the room, I got the fourth bag of blood transfusion. And uh, after I finished that blood transfusion, I got up and walked. I got up and walked and then, Within like an hour or two, I went to the recovery house. Um, yeah, I went to the recovery house. Um, you saw she stayed with me about, my overnight nurse stayed with me about 28 hours. And then she, um, a doctor, one of her, one of her um, staff is a doctor. She can't. She stayed with me the rest of the night, but I was eating. I ate. I was eating, and everything. That's why I didn't understand that something was wrong because I was eating, and everything. The only thing is I couldn't stand up. But after they gave, after they, 
I got back from the operating room the second time and they gave me the fourth bag of blood. I was good. I was good. I got up and I walked and I felt fine. Went back to the recovery house. Like nothing happened. <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I'm just superwoman. I don't know. But that night, went to the recovery house. The car came, picked me up. Um, can't remember her name, doctor. Uh, can't remember her name, but the doctor from USA team, um, brought me outside and then a, and then a driver came with the wheelchair and put me in a car and everything. And I went to the recovery house. When I got to the recovery house, my mother was there. She had flu in that day. Um, she was there and I think everybody else was in their room or sleep. So I don't think nobody know I came home. Um, but everybody was so worried. I even talked, um, I had talked to the girls when um, I talked to my mom. I had talked to uh, the girls at the recovery house. Everyone was so worried about me because my roommate, she'd been left the hospital that morning. And when, when they seen that I didn't come back with her, everybody was so worried. So I got to the recovery house and um, I was good. I was up walking around, up walking around. Um, I wasn't in any pain. I was not in no pain. Um, and in the hospital, they gave me, you know, the pain meds through the IV. And I remember they giving me IV antibiotics as well when I was in the hospital. Um, but yeah, the, so I went to sleep that night, woke up the next day, and I was good. I was good walking around. Um, I even went to the bathroom on my own. Um, my mom did help me in and out the bed the first night. She helped me in and out the bed. Um, then the next day was massage day. So I got back to the recovery house that Friday night, which was February um, 5th. Then Saturday, I had my first massage. And I had pain meds, but that first massage was horrible. I have that on my channel as well, so you guys can go ahead and click to that video. Um, to my first massage, but it was so painful. It was like somebody was skinning me with a knife. Literally. It felt like fire burning underneath my skin. Fire underneath my skin burning. That first massage ain't no joke. Like... It is no joke. I tell everybody, it's no joke. Even with pain meds, it's no joke. Um, yeah, and they at the recovery house, they're nice. The nurses is helpful. Um, they wash my garment every day. My garment get washed every day. Um, they wipe me up every day because there you're not able to take a shower. So, and you can't take a shower with their water, no way um you know with your wounds and stuff so they just wipe you up with a washcloth and and del soap um so the nurses wipe me up every day and they wash my garment um every day while i'm getting my massage um the thing about dr is you cannot flush the toilet with tissue you cannot put tissue in the toilet because there's two system that's what like that blew my mind because nobody never told me no, I didn't know that until like two day, until like, I think by the time I did surgery, I found out that you cannot flush the toilet with tissue because the toilet get clogged up and you cannot brush your teeth with the water. You got to use bottled water to brush your teeth because they filter, their filter system, I guess it's not as good, I guess. But yeah, those are the rules. Don't flush your toilet with, with tissue and don't wash it. Don't brush your teeth with uh, the pipe water. You got to use bottled water. But other than that, my stay is nice. The nurses is really helpful. Um, the most gross that thing, though, is the drain. I hated the drain. The blood coming out through the drain was, like, not cute. It was not a pretty sight. But, um, and, yeah, it was not a pretty sight. And, um, yeah, so the first couple of days was good. Um, 
then my mom left and then by the time my mom left she left that sunday so she was only there for three days i was able to go to the bathroom by myself i was walking throughout the day in the room i was rarely in the bed rarely because that bed is not comfortable so i was really in the bed i was always downstairs or walking in the room and stuff um sometimes i will go to my uh my roommates when since my mom came my roommate had moved downstairs so i would go to her room sometimes and just chill out with her uh she's super cool shout out to my roommate you the best <laughs> You know who you are i know you watch it you will be watching this video but shout out you're like you're like a big sister that i never had <laughs> um but yeah she's super cool um and really nice and uh genuine people it's just like when you meet genuine people keep them close because you you don't find genuine people often you know but um anyways the um yeah and another thing i did not like about the recovery house is you gotta pay them to wash you like your clothes they only wash your faha that's all they wash is your faha and your undershirts so i wasn't paying nobody no extra money yes i was not paying no extra money so i just kindly um i kindly wore wore my clothes um i bought extra dresses and stuff so i had enough clothes to wear them and i had my uh scarves and robes and stuff so i'm glad i brought a lot of stuff to have extra uh but yeah the experience was was different it's a you know a third world country the nurses do not speak english not the nurses i won't call them nurses i will call them home attendants the people that take care of you in the recovery house they're more ho like home attendants um they don't speak english so anything you're trying to communicate with them rather is what you want for breakfast you gotta do through the app google translate so google translate was my best friend and stuff and sometimes the nurses they do not work the home attendants they do not wear gloves like i'll be looking at them like they're crazy sometimes and i'll wipe down my stuff with hands and it's with um the clorox wipes the the um antibacterial wipes and stuff because they'll be touching on your drain without even washing their hands or stuff they didn't have i was so surprised the recovery house did not have they didn't have like hand sanitizer posted like you know how you go to certain places they have the hand sanitizer on the wall they did not have that they didn't have no hand. They didn't provide you with hand sanitizer, and a nurse, the home attendants didn't have hand sanitizer. And then, and then also the recovery house, like men was just walking in and out. I guess the drivers, I don't know, who, the security guard, whoever. Men was just all throughout the house. That was one thing I did not like. So anytime I went downstairs, I made sure I cover up. Um, the house have steps, so my room was on the second floor. So anytime I went downstairs, I covered up. Uh, because random people would just be be there and would just like be walking in and stuff that wasn't cool um but other than that everyone was nice um everyone was nice but they give you like the same thing like the is it pineapple juice or mango juice or whatever sometimes i'll just have water and i bought gatorade too i bought gatorade zero so i'll have that um yeah but my experience was it was different it was an experience it really was being you know in a different place they do things totally different like they don't have like alcohol uh swabs like when they're like giving you your heparin shot or whatever they have this is what they do they put cotton balls in a container with alcohol and then every time they're gonna give you your heparin shot they dig their hand in that one container with the alcohol that container is probably full of bacteria. So that's another thing. If you go into DR, make sure you bring your own. I have my own alcohol and my own cotton balls. But make sure you bring your own alcohol, your own cotton balls, or the alcohol wipes or whatever. Because they use the same thing for everybody. Same thing with the wound care stuff. They use that same little, that same little container. They use it for everybody. So... Yeah, that's one thing I did not like. I feel like when it comes to 
people you can't use that one thing you can't have it in the open like have a thing full of cotton balls and alcohol no it needs to be individually wrapped or you take a alcohol a cotton ball out the package and you put alcohol on it not have a big thing sitting in alcohol and then using it for everybody i i think that's not cool